Hello everyone, uh, this is Dr. Shijun Wang. In today's video, I am going to talk about octaves and how to practice how to play octaves. Um, I know this is a kind of a change of style compared to the videos I made before. I was really mainly focusing on specific pieces and how technically or musically we should treat uh, certain parts. Uh, but I felt like I should probably focus a little more on some specific techniques so that more people can apply this to whatever the pieces they're working on, right? And not so many people are practicing this specific Chopin ballade or etudes, but we all, sooner or later, uh, have to face octaves, yeah, because that's really a very basic and important technique in the piano playing. Um, so a couple of uh, principles here. Um, most of the time, I would say really more than 50% of the time, octaves are loud. Yeah, Because if you think about it, a single note, it can be loud, it can be soft, but then a composer wanted to double it, sometimes triple it, or quadruple it. Yeah? And, and if we play both hands with octaves, that's really picking up four or three octaves out of seven. So a lot of the times, Komoto wanted to have powerful and deep sound. Um, but let's not forget, sometimes octaves should be leggero, should be light. Yeah, a good example is the... Um, is the Butterfly Etudes by, by Chopin. Um, for octave playing, there are two challenges. One is accuracy, the other is the speed. Okay, uh, most times octaves are in the most exciting part where the pianist uh, is showing off the virtuosic technique, uh, and it's fast. Okay, so remember the following principles. Number one, um, do not aim the octave do not aim two notes. Aim only the finger that is closer to your eyes. So for left hand, aim the thumb. For right hand, aim the thumb. So instead of only do aim the lower finger or the one closer to your eyes. The other, you have to really remember the position, this formation of the hand. Okay, so let me just try this. I'm not looking at my pinky. I'm only looking at my thumb. Or, yeah, I cannot see my pinky, but it's accurate. Because my hand remembers how far this interval is. And then I only aim for the thumb. For left hand, it's the same. I don't want to turn my head, so it's the thumb. And the other important thing is to make sure the finger uh, tips, the, the knuckle of the fifth finger or sometimes the fourth finger is very firm. Because if you can find the position, that's not the whole story. Sometimes when we try to force it, when we try to have a very deep and loud sound, then this part, when it's not supported properly, they will slide down and have wrong notes. So always thinking that this part is, is really supporting. And a very rigorous uh, way of practicing that is to, instead of playing octaves, let's uh, have that as an example, that's the Chopin etude. If we do this, it's fine, but if we can if we can only use the weak fingers to play them and still play the loud, that actually gives it double insurance. Yeah. So uh, and sometimes when it jumps, uh, when it moves. We, we need to really be able to play the top 
only. So these are the two most important things in terms of the accuracy. In terms of the speed, we all know that we can play single notes faster than, than the, uh, the octaves. Because single notes, you just move your fingers, but here you can't move your fingers the same way. You have to move the entire arm and wrist and this whole package. Um, so how do we do it faster? Um, and, you know, faster toward the speed has a lot to do with the tenacity as well. So, I mean, everyone can play five or four very fast, but a lot of pieces requires us to play 300 uh, octaves. So, if, uh, to a really short-term speed, it really doesn't matter that much. It's how you can keep the speed and then play it for three pages. Um, or sometimes even longer, five minutes. Um, so this is the principle for that, okay? When we play note by note, really there is a limitation of, of how fast we can play. But we should, instead of playing or using one movement, one gesture to play one note, we should acquire the ability to play more than one octave, and this also applies to chords too. Um, so this way, I'm really bouncing up. Uh, my professor, uh, Narika Chu, now the Eastman, calls this the double drops. Yeah? So one drop instead of one note, you play two notes. Yeah. And I totally think this is really uh, the same idea from playing drops. Yeah. The mallet bounces back and you have to press it down again and then it bounces back. So that in order to play it super quick, like, like this kind of speed, of course turning your wrist is not fast enough. So it's really a, a very intricate delicate control of this mallet going up and down and it needs a lot of flexibility relaxation and of course you have to press it too so it's the same way we want it to bounce back and then with the rest of the energy we play the following note So, usually a very difficult piece that has octaves or a lot in them, Tchaikovsky Concerto, Brahms Concerto, uh, many list pieces, uh, Spanish Rhapsody, and, and Chopin, of course, has this famous uh, octave etude. And it's not three notes that you, you should go, it's 300 or sometimes even more. So. We have to really think of 300 octaves as 100 three note groups, okay? So instead of we're like swimming without breathing, this is one, one, one. And at the very beginning when we're learning this, really the graphic of the key is quite complicated, right? It has this combination of white and black keys and also for instance, this etude, it goes up, goes down, and sometimes it's yeah, sometimes it's neighbor tone, sometimes it's passing tone. So we have to really learn the three note groups by three note groups and relax after. We have to teach our arms how to relax. Then we, 
that we play them all uh, at once. And also, it's almost like we have to cover up our footprints. Uh, we don't want to. We don't want to sound like that. That's so uneven. So these two bounces back, we actually apply to a lot of the natural arm weight. So that it kind of, in a way, matches up the tone. So it is not loud, soft, soft. Okay, so this double drop or triple drop, whatever you call it, should take care of all. Because if the thing is in duple meter, then we... in triple meter, right? then, you know, if there are four, then we use two groups of two notes. Um, but since I was here, I never played the uh, Hungarian Rhapsody, um, there is another issue, uh, and that is when you have a repeated octave. And the principle to resolve that problem really is the same as if you're playing repeated notes on a single note. Um, I see a lot of times students will play this without moving or changing the placement, changing the position of, of where you touch the keyboard. Um, and you should always change the positions. Yeah? So if you do this, very easily you get tense. But one, two, three, one, two, three, you see my hand is moving because my, my wrist is also moving. Principle. It doesn't matter which direction you choose, but if you're stuck in on one location, then then you you very likely would would tense up. Um, and of course, there are all kinds of octaves. Um, a year ago or two years ago, I played the Paganini variation by Brahms, and In that piece, we have this octave glando, um, and, and in that case, again, the glando I focus only on my thumb, and this is really just following, yeah, yeah. And for octave glandos, uh, the true difficulty is really not the glando itself, but where and how do you stop? So you want to stop on the right note, and that is hard when you're moving fast. You see, glissando you have to move fast because if you move slow, you get stuck. Yeah? So do it with your thumb. And then do it with the octaves. It shouldn't be very hard. Um, and at the beginning of the, the, the video, I also mentioned not all octaves are, are hard or, or are loud. Uh, and many people don't realize this is actually a octave exercise. You can study your etude on octave. Because if we change this to yeah, because of this I guess Chopin was feeling merciful. Then he had this so that it gave us a time to to rest instead of one, two, three, one, two, three is one, two, three, one. Yeah. So in this case, um, don't my elbow or my wrist lifts slightly and of course the top is, is uh, really very focused um, and there are slower octaves um, usually when the octaves are slow it's legato, it's singing, like this, the middle section of the octave etude. Yeah. So how do we do this in a singing style? Uh, two things, and it's really exactly the same as the uh, G 
single notes, you have to play deep. It cannot be flat. Yeah? And then you have to have crescendo, diminuendos, ups and downs. leave the key also helps yeah if you can use a lot of one four one three uh, that's really helpful because to overlap is impossible with fifth finger only okay so again i hope these kind of videos will help more people yeah there are octaves in beethoven in in schumann in brahms in all kinds of pieces um so if you can apply this to the pieces you're currently working on and i'm sure there are other types of octaves so if you are interested in my answers or in how i would work on them um, maybe some i've already had answer and some i have to really put some thoughts and and do some research but you're welcome to leave me messages and and hopefully i will create this forum so that we talk about a specific types of, of a technique uh, each week. Thank you for watching. See you next week.